part 15 of Project E55 ASL and this is definitely going to be a really long and difficult part. Um, to start off I'm going to be riveting on some aluminum panels for the side impact protection and for the firewall and a few other places where some aluminum panels are needed on the chassis. Um, after that I'm going to be getting to putting this whole front part of the chassis back together, uh, mounting the front suspension and the radiators and everything, and then finally getting to putting some of the systems off the car together like the cooling system, the um, braking system, the fuel system, so that um, I can get one step closer to getting this car working. So definitely a, a lot of work to do for this video. Let's start off by riveting on the aluminum panels and then get to all the rest of this stuff. So starting off by talking about some of the changes that I've made since the previous video, or you guys can probably already tell what I've done since the previous video, I've painted the whole chassis and um, while painting it was a little tricky because uh, my garage is really small so I couldn't disassemble the whole car all at once. So what I had to do was I disassembled this back end first and I painted all this part then put all this back together and then I disassembled the front part and painted all that and well I still have to put that back together. Apologize for not recording all that in a video but I did post pictures on my Instagram for all of this so I guess you guys can follow along on that for all these um, steps in the middle but all the major parts I'm trying to cover in the videos at least. Uh, but anyways yeah for now what I have to do is that I have to get to um, riveting on these aluminum panels that need to go on the side and on some other places. So for these it's going to be fairly easy. All I have to do is that I have to uh, mark where to cut these aluminum panels. So I'm going to start off by cutting them to size and then later I'll have to drill a lot of holes in here for the rivets and then I'm going to be gluing and riveting this panel on the sides and on some of the other places that they need to go. For cutting the aluminum panels to size, I just clamped them in place and then I just used a marker to mark the positions I had to cut it at from the other side. After that it was back to the angle grinder to cut these panels to the same shape. I used that steel flat bar to make sure that I cut in a straight line. Once the panels were cut, I clamped them back in the place they had to go and I had to mark the positions where I had to put the rivets in. Once all the positions were marked, I had to center punch them and then drill holes there. The other side turned out to be a little easier because all I had to do was put the sheet from the other side on top of this one and um, just clamp it in place and just copy the same drilling pattern that I used on that side. Before I could mount the side panels in place I actually had to start by mounting these back ones in place because a few of the points where the rivets have to go they become inaccessible if I were to put the side ones on first. For these back panels I had to make them in two parts rather than just one big panel because the shape is really weird it would have been impossible to put it inside the chassis with just one big piece. Before putting the panels in place I just needed to apply some adhesive on the place where these panels have to go. Um, now you might notice on the steel tube chassis there's a few places that are not painted. Um, so I left these places unpainted so that the adhesive bonds straight to the metal rather than bonding to the paint. Um, on a few of the other places I did accidentally paint them and I had to scrape the paint off later before applying the adhesive. Once the back panels were mounted in place it was onto the side panel so the same process just applying some adhesive then carefully putting these panels in place and then spending a lot of time riveting everything together. After the side panels were done it was on to the front adding these two panels that go on the well football football area of the chassis. And after that it was on to this one big panel that goes behind the engine, the firewall really that separates the engine from the chassis. Here's a look at all the aluminum panels after they are mounted in place. This was by the way a lot of work putting all these aluminum panels in place. Um, especially the drilling, that's the part I hated the most. I broke a few drill bits while drilling too. Also not sure if I mentioned earlier but the purpose of these aluminum panels is uh, mainly for side impact protection. So like let's say if you get in a crash and some car bashes into this car from the side and let's say it has a sharp splitter in front of it that might come through these steel tubes and injure the driver. 
Now these aluminum panels are there to make sure that nothing really comes through the chassis and injures the driver or the passenger. Uh, for these panels at the front, I mounted them on the inside rather than the outside. This is so that when you get in a crash, your feet can't go outside of the chassis, like they remain inside of the chassis, and also to protect your feet a little better so that they don't hit against these steel tubes. But all this part is gonna be covered by the body panels that I'm gonna add later on. Like um, there is gonna be a whole carbon fiber section that is gonna go over this um, thing and that's gonna cover all this riveted section and everything. Um, also this one, I've left it a little higher right now, this um, firewall at the front. That's also for the same reason because the body panels are a little higher, like they go at this level over here. So it's to provide a bit of um, extra protection for like from the heat of the engine. Um, I wasn't able to rivet these three parts over here so I've added these clamps over here um, because I didn't remove the engine and transmission right now but at a later time if I happen to remove the engine and transmission I'll also add rivets over there. The engine and transmission are pretty easy to remove like it's just a matter of like unbolting those four bolts and two bolts on the transmission but the problem is that I don't have that much space right now. There's literally no space at all to put the engine and transmission if I was to take it out right now. That's why I have left that in place. Also, there's supposed to be some more additional aluminum panels that need to go up on the floor of the car. So all the floor also needs to be covered, but I've left those out for now because they're gonna be a little more difficult because those panels actually need to go above the transmission and above the fuel cell that is uh, gonna be mounted over here and also above the drive shaft. For now, what I've done is that I've added this um, steel thing over the drive shaft so that if in case the drive shaft happens to bend or break, it still will stay in its place. It wouldn't really come out of there. Um, but later I will be adding that full transmission tunnel and everything so everything should be really safe once it's done. So now that most of the aluminum panels are mounted in place next I have to get to putting this whole chassis back together like putting the front end on and the radiators and everything. So I started off by putting the front end of the chassis back in place. This was a little difficult to do by myself because these bolting points have to line up exactly uh, but after a bit of encouraging I was able to line them up properly. And after that I just had to bolt everything in place and torque it down properly. After that it was on to the front suspension, so I started off by putting the steering rack in place. After that I got to mounting the control arms. Once the spindle and everything was installed, next I just moved the suspension through its full travel range, making sure that none of the ball joints bind through the full travel range of the suspension, and also moving all the different steering positions and making sure that everything is still fine. And after that it was finally on to installing the coilover shocks. Once everything was torqued down, I just gave it a good shake, making sure that there is no play in everything because at this point there shouldn't be any play in anything. And after that it was finally on to installing the brakes. So first I started off by installing the brake discs. And then these massive 8 piston calipers. And after that it was just a matter of putting the crumple zone back on along with all the radiators. Um, so this construction makes it really easy to take the car apart and put it back together. It's a modular construction much like you find in race cars and um, of course the benefit is that it makes it extremely easy to work on the car.
Here's a look at everything after it's all put back together and I have to say I think it's this color scheme on the suspension it's looking really good like uh, now the suspension really stands out from the rest of the chassis like before it was kind of blended in with the rest of the chassis now you can really tell uh, all the different suspension components like the control arms, the push rod, um, the steering rod over there and everything. Um, so yeah, definitely looks really cool. But anyways, more importantly, the thing that I have to get to now is putting some of the systems of the car together. Um, so I want to start off with the cooling system because that's the system that's, well, the most in place right now. The radiators are already in place. The um, coolant reservoir where the coolant goes, that's already in place in all the engine and all the rest of the cooling things are already there. Um, so the cooling system in this car is a little more complicated than what you find in most normal cars like Honda Civics and stuff where there's just an engine and a radiator and two hoses that link the engine to the radiator. Um, this one there's this coolant reservoir in the middle, there's an extra pump that I have to connect that um, circulates the um, coolant around the engine. Uh, but it's not too difficult, it's just a few extra hoses involved. So what I have to do is that this is the hose, well this is the thermostat on the engine, that's where it goes. This is a thermostat housing. So this pipe is the thing that um, basically throws out all the hot coolant that needs to go to the radiator. The radiator cools it down and then this hose returns it back to the engine from on that hose over there. But on this hose I also need to connect this thing somewhere in the middle like uh, when this hose goes to the radiator. Well not just somewhere in the middle, it has to be at the highest point of the cooling system because uh, this point is where all the air is supposed to be bleeded out of the system. So this point, this pipe should link to this pipe and uh, this pipe basically, yeah, it just fills air into this coolant reservoir and then there's this pipe at the bottom that needs to go to that pipe on the radiator. So basically all the air that is going into this coolant reservoir is um, then basically repla being replaced by coolant. So the coolant is going in the system. It's basically a system that is gonna um, make sure that if there's any air in the system, it's always in the coolant reservoir and not in your PEDS or your radiator or something. So um, also on top of that, there's also this small hose, like you might notice this tiny hose that's coming out over here. So this hose is actually for a small pump that I need to connect somewhere over here that is gonna, it's a pump that is always on on this engine and it circulates coolant around the block and also to the uh, heater core. Well, there is no heater in this car, but I still need that pump because I have turbos that still need, like the coolant still needs to flow around the block and also through the turbos just to keep the turbos cool and to keep the heads and everything on the engine cool. So for making the cooling system, I started off by bending some aluminum pipes in my tube bender to make the main cooling pipes that needed to go to the radiator. This wasn't really the best idea because I ended up with pretty horrible looking bends, but since it was just a radiator hose, I didn't really care. For all the hoses that were not too important or like where pressure wasn't really too critical, I just used silicone hoses to connect everything because it was really quick and it made it really easy to connect everything. Once all the hoses were connected to the radiator, next I had to get to connecting all the other hoses for the cooling system. So yeah, really not much to show you guys for this part. It was pretty much just me stroking the car for like 5 hours and ending up with fluids on my face. But after a bit of struggle, I did manage to put the whole thing together. So after going through a lot of wire ties and silicon hoses, I finally managed to put the whole cooling system together. And actually while I was at the cooling system, I also put the power steering system and uh, the engine oil cooler together. So anyways, going over the cooling system. So this is the coolant reservoir that goes over here. This is the line for the air, like um, that's at the highest point of the cooling system. So it can bleed all the air out of the system. And um, this line at the bottom is now connected to this part on the radiator. And then these are the main two lines for the radiator, like that um, f from the main pump that uh, flow cool into the radiator and then back to the block. Um, for these lines, yeah, I've used aluminum lines. I haven't clamped some of these lines for now because I ran out of clamps, but I'm going to be buying clamps and then putting them on. Um, for securing the lines and everything, I've just used wire ties, like for securing these um, silicone hoses and stuff. Because honestly, I find that the best way. It's quick, it's easy, and um, anytime you have to make repairs, it's way easier to cut these off and then put new ones on later rather than making brackets for it and then looking for a 10 millimeter spanner every time you have to replace a hose or something. 
So this way I find it the easiest for me at least. For the second pump that's needed for the cooling system, I've put that pump over here. So this is the second pump that flows coolant around the block. And the way that circuit works is that, well, it starts over here. So the coolant comes out of this head and then it goes into this T. Now these, some of these parts are really crappy looking for me because the parts, the place where I bought all these parts from, it mainly, um, I guess, supplies industrial parts. It's, uh, well, the shop is called Fluid Lines at Sierra Oakville. Um, but the reason I went to them is because it made it really easy for me to piece this whole thing together. I just went with them with the list of all the pressures and temperatures I was dealing with. And they were able to supply, give me all the silicon hoses, all the connectors, all the fittings that I needed to put the system together. It made it really easy for me rather than looking for all these individual parts myself, would have, which would have taken a lot of time piecing this whole thing together. Uh, but anyways, the way this thing works is that um, the coolant comes out of this head, it goes through this T, which divides it into two paths. So one uh, line goes through this turbo and one line goes through the other turbo. And then from the turbo, it then goes to this pump and then this pump pumps it back to the block. So the um, coolant is always flowing through the heads and also through the turbos to keep everything cool all the time or to keep everything at the same temperature all the time. Now there is a small improvement I'm planning to make to this system for later. Um, it was something that Tassos pointed out. Um, Tassos, if you don't know his channel, he rebuilds these AMG engines. I'll link it in the description below it's a pretty cool channel. Um, so what he pointed out was that I should also open up this plug on this head. Um, it's located over here so that um, coolant can flow through both heads. So that's uh, supposed to make the coolant flow better and um, that way both the heads will stay close to the same temperature. Um, so what I'm planning to do for later is that I'll also open this plug and that way I can just cut this line off and connect it over here. So um, the coolant from this head will then flow, go to that turbo and the coolant from that head will go, go to that turbo and hopefully will um, circulate the coolant a little better. I didn't do that for now because it's a hassle getting to that plug right now. I'll just wait for the next time I have the engine out and then I'll probably make that modification. Getting to the power steering system. So the power steering system was also fairly easy to hook up. All I had to do was I had to connect this high pressure line coming from the um, E55 power steering pump. That's the one over here um, that I had to connect to this Master Miata power steering rack. Um, this is actually a right-hand drive Mazda Miata power steering rack that are flipped upside down. That's why the lines are at the bottom rather than at the top. Um, but yeah, that high pressure line goes through the rack. Then the return line from that rack, it's actually, I think, the bottom blue hose over here. Um, so this line actually goes to the automatic transmission cooler. So like it's, um, that line is coming from here going into this cooler. So there's actually an automatic transmission cooler built into this radiator. But since I don't have an automatic transmission anymore, I'm just using that cooler as the power steering cooler now. Um, so this fluid then flows through that cooler and then it returns back to the power steering reservoir over here. Um, so fairly easy circuit to hook up. The only high pressure thing, it was this one line coming from the power steering pump to the power steering rack. The, all the other circuit is just a return line. So it doesn't really have any pressure inside it. For the engine oil cooler, all I had to do was I had to connect these two lines. So um, these two lines are the lines that go to the factory engine oil cooler on the E55, but I had them modified. Like I had these lines attached to them so that I could run an aftermarket oil cooler. I had done this before. Um, so this time all I had to do was I had to cut this hose off. I had to connect these um, longer lines on the front that run all the way to the um, engine oil cooler at the front over here now. So anyways, getting to the systems that are still left on the car. So one thing that is still left is the drain lines for the turbos. I still have to add a scavenging pump that is gonna pump those, uh, the drained oil from the turbos back to the engine. After that, I have to get to work on the fuel system and the braking system. So connecting all the brake lines, um, connecting the pedal box, connecting all the fuel lines and everything, all that stuff. And also a clutch line and also actually the induction system for the turbos as well. Um, so I was planning to work on some more of the systems in this video, like the fuel system and the braking system. But since this is already taking way too long, I'm just going to upload this video. A couple of you guys were already commenting that where's the next video. So um, I guess I'll end this video over here. But uh, the next video hopefully should also be coming pretty soon. That's uh, The next video is now going to be on the braking system and on the fuel system. And um, hopefully some more systems, hopefully also getting started on the electronics of the car. Um, because that is something that I really need to get to. I need to get to installing an AEM Infinity ECU and um, also linking up all the electronics of the car because there's a couple more circuits that are going to go in this car, which um, I'm probably just going to leave for the next video to talk about. So yeah, this is going to be everything for now. I'm going to try to keep working on the car, try to get the next video up um, as quick as possible too, hopefully sometime next week. But yeah, anyways, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.